You wanted to see me? Yes, Paul. I really like the way you dance. No, I mean it. So I figured we'd try this again. For one thing, if you're gonna change your name, why go from a Puerto Rican one to an Italian one? Because I don't look it. Well, people always say you don't look Puerto Rican. You don't look Puerto Rican. But I am. So you figured you looked Italian? No. I just wanted to be somebody new. So I became Paul San Marco. Why did you want to become someone new? Why? Well, I'm not exactly proud of my past. And well, who is? But that's what the word means, Paul. Past. Well, that might be easy for you to say, look, but look, look. wait a minute. What made you start dancing? Your parents? No. Well, what do Puerto Ricans know about theater? Well, now they have Channel 47, but then? They didn't have anything. My father loved movies, and he used to take us all the time. He used to work nights, and then he'd come home, and he'd take us to 42nd Street, and we'd walk in one movie, and then in another, and then in another, and I don't know why, but I really loved musicals. How old were you? Uh, seven or eight. On 42nd Street? Yeah, it was a trip. Go on. I'd have to move down front because I couldn't see. Well, I wear contact lenses now. Um, I used to move down front, and these strange men would come sit beside me and play with me. Well, I never told anyone because I guess it didn't matter. Why did it matter? Why? Well, I think that at that Look, Paul, if, if this is too rough, I have your picture, I have your resume. No. No. Okay. Uh, from seeing all those movie musicals, I used to dance around on the street, and I'd get caught all the time. God, it was embarrassing. I was always pretending to be Sid Charisse. Always. <laughs> Which I don't really understand because I really wanted to be an actor. I mean, I really wanted to perform. One day my cousin said to me, you'll never be an actor. And I knew she was telling me this because I was such a sissy. I was terribly offended. I always knew I was gay, but that didn't bother me. What bothered me was that I didn't know how to be a boy. One day I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, you're 14 years old and you're a faggot. What are you going to do with your life? <laughs> By that time, I was at Cardinal Hayes High School. There were 3,000 boys there. I had no protection anymore. No homeroom where I could sit and be charming and funny with the tough guys so they'd fight my battles for me. Like when I went to small school. I liked school, but after a while, it got so bad. Even if I knew the answers to questions, I wouldn't raise my hand because I'd be too afraid that they would laugh at me. They would even whistle at me in the halls. It was awful, just awful. One day, I went to the principal's office, and I said, I'm a homosexual. Well, it was a Catholic high school. And at the age of 15, you just didn't say that. So. Principal said, would you like to see a psychologist? And I did. And he said, I think you're well adjusted for your age and I think you should quit school. So I did. But I really didn't want to. I, I just couldn't take it anymore. See, when I quit school, what I was doing was trying to find out who I was and how to be a man. You know, there are a lot of people in this world who don't know how to be men. And since then, I found out that I am one. I was just looking for the wrong thing. I was trying to learn how to be butch. <laughs> anyway, I started hanging around 72nd Street, meeting these really strange people, just trying to make friends that were like me trying to understand what it was that I was. Somebody told me that they were looking for male dancers at the Jewel Box Review. You know, the drag show? So I went. 
Now, from all those years of pretending to be Sid Charisse, I had this fabulous extension. I mean, I could turn anything. My first audition, and they said to me, you're too short to be a boy. Would you like to be a pony? And I thought, well, what's that? And they said, a girl. Well, what do I have to do? Show us your legs. My legs? What about I have hair on my legs? That's OK. Come on upstairs. So I went. And they hyped up my dungarees, and they put on a pair of nylon stockings and high heel shoes. It was freaky. It was incredible. And then they brought me back downstairs, and they said to me, you have wonderful legs. And I said, really? <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> oh, it's so strange thinking about all this now. I mean, it was such a lifetime ago. I was just past 16. Oh, and anyway, then there was this thing of me trying to hide it from my parents. Ugh, that was something. Because I had to buy all this stuff to rehearse in, like <coughs> shoes and earrings and makeup. And then I'd have to hide them all, and my mother would always find them. But I told her that they were for this girl in the show who didn't want her mother to know what she was doing, so I was holding them for her, and she believed me. Well, I was finally in show business. It was the asshole of show business. But it was a job, nothing to brag about. I had friends, but after a while, it got so demeaning. I mean, nobody at the jewel box had any dignity, and most of them considered themselves freaks. I don't know. I, I guess it was the lack of dignity that got to me, so I left. Oh, I muddled around for a while. I worked as an office boy and as a waiter, but without an education, you just can't get a good job. So when the jewel box called and asked if I'd come back, I went. We were working the Apollo Theater at 125th Street, doing four shows a day with a movie. It was really tacky. But the show was going to go to Chicago. My parents wanted to bring my luggage to me after the show. Well, we were doing this oriental number, and I looked like Anna Mae Wong. I had these two great big chrysanthemums on either side of my head, and this huge dress with gold balls all over it. Well, we were going on to the finale, and I was going up down the stairs, and who should I see standing by the stage door but my parents. They had gotten there too early. Well, I freaked. I didn't know what to do, but I thought to myself, I know. I'll walk quickly past them like all the others, and they'll never recognize me. So I took a deep breath, and I went down the stairs. And just as I passed my mother, I heard her say, oh my god. Well, I died. I didn't know what to do. But I had to go in the finale, so I just kept on going. After the show, I went back to my dressing room, and after dressing and taking off my makeup, I went back downstairs, and there they were, standing in the middle of all these. And all they said to me was, please take care of yourself. Don't forget to write, and don't forget to eat. <laughs> and just as my family left, my father turned to the producer, and he said, Take care of my son. You know, that was the first time he ever called me that. And I wanted to say to him that all I could say to 